Hello, it's Uri speaking. What you are looking at it now is some kind of a pair thread system. I developed uh, myself uh, from scratch. It's based on uh, C Sharp and uh, SQL, SQL Server and uh, uh, server side SQL scripts. Basically, the system is able to, uh, to look at real time data that is coming from uh, the major three stock exchanges, American ones, NASDAQ, New York Stock, stock Exchange, and uh, Amex. And uh, to recognize as trading occurs um, similarities and pairs between the, the different uh, stocks and ETFs. The results are, uh, uh, are stored in a database for a, a future ob observing. You can delete them, you can look at them carefully, zoom in and out. Um, let's find, for example, uh, Google. Do we have a Google? Yeah, we have a Google. Okay, and that's a pair of trade uh, for Google um, and some kind of a Brazilian ETF. This is pretty old, from December <laughs> 2011. Um, I'm considering here uh, approximately 8,000 different financial instruments. The system is based on a, a, on a model of, a, of training. Basically, I, I, I uh, implement some kind of a sampling procedure. It could last uh, one minute or 30 seconds or five seconds or it could be shorter than that. So based on this, this uh, training procedure, uh, some some kind of a set of machine learning algorithms are being implemented on uh, the data that uh, is stored first in the SQL Server. And uh, the algorithms are trying to find the uh, similarities between the different uh, signals or uh, time series. Once the similarities are recognized and the uh, pairs are basically recognized, the, uh, we, we, we assume that uh, once uh, a pair was uh, spreaded, meaning that they the, the stopped being a pair, there is a pretty high likelihood that uh, they are going to meet again at some future point. Not necessarily it, it, it happens, but uh, very likely that it will. I set here some uh, known parameters related to pairs trading, like the separation threshold, um, that's when uh, uh, the trading begins. Let's put it a lower value. The crossing threshold, when we decide to uh, uh, to stop the trading. So this one is to start. This one is to stop. To stop with a profit. This one, the stop loss threshold, is to stop with a loss. What happens when when we start losing lots of money? We we want to to stop it. We are fine with losing a. Uh, little amount of money. That's the risk that we're taking. And I'm considering here also uh, fees. Um, they're all uh, hypothetical just for our little exercise. And uh, I built this system for fun. I'm not doing any any trading. It's just for pr practicing and for uh, uh, learning. So here I'm also defining what's called a, a time interval. During the sampling, I'm, I'm grabbing a series of uh, uh, price vectors. Each one is of the length of 8,000 values, or close to 8,000. And, uh, and the time between each sampling is uh, basically 5 seconds. Let's, let's start it. And we are doing it a couple of times. It's pre-configurable. Pre In this case, I'm going to do it uh, 6 times. So it's starting. So every couple of seconds, a vector is being measured. It takes more than five seconds to sample. The reason is that I'm using here some kind of free data feed. It's coming from Yahoo Finance. And Yahoo Finance allows 
uh, to grab information for up to 200 financial instruments at a time and here I need 8,000 so what I do I submit the same request like 40 times so imagine how, how uh, extensive it would be to <laughs> to submit uh, 40 HTTP requests so it's 5 seconds plus the amount it takes to, su to submit and get the, the 40 HTTP requests and also to, to parse all the data you know, the list and the dictionaries all the other data structures that are behind the scenes um, so the data is being grabbed now placed in the database let's, let's be patient and see what happens after I finished grabbing all of the data I can implement or run some kind of a machine learning algorithm or a set of machine learning algorithms in my case what they do is basically they they accomplish some clustering procedure it's more, more complex than that um, it's a set of machine learning that I came up uh, myself splitting the, the information into small pieces and then coming up with some kind of a self-labeling procedure uh, uh, converting the problem for uh, an unsupervised learning to a supervised learning uh, for those who know what machine learning is uh, it, it will speak <laughs> for, for itself and then I came up with some kind of a ranking procedure that uh, grabs uh, the little uh, sub classification problem and create uh, an entire classification uh, for the 8,000 financial instruments that were measured uh, during this uh, uh, training period. So the system recognized 69 different financial instruments over this training or sampling time, uh, meaning that uh, at least one of them has a pair. So let's let's grab some arbitrary one. Let's pick Apple. So for Apple, ADS was recognized as a pair. So let's let's see what's happening now. That's uh, real time data. That's pretty interesting, no? Like this split, then I meet again. This split, I meet again. I can't really say what it is, but uh, I suspect that someone else is <laughs> is running some kind of uh, his or her algo trading uh, strategy, and we are uh, watching it now as it happens. So the system is basically waiting for uh, the difference between. Apple and ADS to to become to spread by the, by this value, and then a, a pairs trading strategy or or trading <laughs> is going to begin buying one and uh, and shorting shortening the, the other one. Uh, but here nothing is really really pairs trade compatible is happening. So let's try something else. And th the results uh, are obviously being stored in the database. Let's let's pick something else. Open table, and it's pair PG and X. Okay, so here a spread was recognized. <laughs> ah, that was quick. <laughs> After three seconds. Um, three seconds after the tracking started, a separation threshold was exceeded, meaning that uh, those two stocks, uh, the difference between them exceeded the threshold w that we that we predefined. We also predefined uh, some kind of a <laughs> value for trading, ten thousand dollars each, and uh, of course each one. Uh, has a different value because because of the different price. So for PG and X, uh, 998 shares were, were, were traded, and for Open, 
268 shares were traded and um, once the other threshold was recognized that was the time to to end the, the trade and uh, in this time we made uh, nine dollars and twenty four cents in uh, three seconds and that's quite interesting so that's really interesting let's uh, let's take a different stock TCK and PCLN so they, they looked at they're moving uh, pretty the same uh, range. That's very interesting. TCK and PCLN. So this is just for uh, demonstration purposes. But imagine that uh, I was going to launch many many threads or uh, uh, run the same software, the same pair thread program or software, running on on many other machines and uh, each time grab a couple of cents or a couple of uh, dollars and of course lose from time to time um, if if I'm going to implement a very good pair trade strategy it seems that such a system is going to be uh, pretty uh, profitable Let's wait uh, a couple of more seconds just to see if some kind of a more interesting activity is going to to happen. This is pretty interesting, this area. So you can also see the difference between them here uh, in real time, which is obviously smaller than than this one. Let's just for the exercise set is that's really low. Zero eight. Okay, it exceeded. <laughs> so we can configure the param parameters in real time. Let's see what will happen. Okay, it ended. <laughs> so again. Uh, we configured the, the, the separa separation threshold in real time <laughs> because we're, we were impatient to wait for the 0 0.15 and then trading started shortening TCK and buying PCLN and once uh, the crossing threshold was exceeded that was the right time to, to finish the the trading with profit in this case it's uh, 478 uh, dollars uh, for seven seconds uh, of course the the da data here is uh, hypothetical I'm, I'm not sure that uh, these are the right uh, fees but uh, uh, for a demo purposes uh, I think that we are fine so I'm just showing you a couple of uh, previous uh, examples for pairs trading. Let's let's have a look at Microsoft. Um, yeah, Microsoft. That's pretty interesting <laughs> and pretty old. Let's have a look at um, Netflix. Okay, that's from February, and that's boring. Uh, 
A Teva, that's an Israeli. That's boring. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Pair straight for Netflix. And the pair that was recognized is I Y F. So it started here to spread. And then they met again here. So for this period we could have made a, a very nice profit. For example, start the trading here. Uh, shortening at Netflix, the red one and uh, buying the IYF then end the trading here and so on and so this is my <laughs> my fun pair trade system I'm going to develop it further later on so thank you very much for uh, listening and for your uh, patience goodbye